This is made out of teak wood. It's beautifully carved Completely as well. Completely hollow isn't it? inside. Yes. And this part is a gourd. This very fragile. You see, I don't believe in putting it in a box. I travel with it in a just ordinary case, and I buy a ticket for it. It travels always next to me. Ah, oh, yes, with its on own seat belt on on the plane. Yes, of course, <laughs> without seat. Yes. And you see, these are all very delicate, beautiful work. It's done by a person called Nodu Malik. He only makes it for me. I, you know, it's a special. It's like a steady various. So you didn't play something like this when you were a young man. It was it a simpler? Oh, uh, much simpler. Then. That was. Yes. You see another piece of gold here with an opening. You see, this is more or less like a sound box. It has six main strings for playing, out of which four are for melody. And two are for rhythm and drone. And underneath these strings, there are all these strings which are tuned by these little yes. pegs. How many? Thirteen. And you, which hand, do you play them with your left hand? The, the, the strings underneath, do you play those at all? Or are they just vibrating as you play the, yeah, the top string? Yeah, they are known as sympathetic resonating strings. They vibrate, you see. So that gives the special, uh, and you get overtones also like this, for instance. And uh, what is very important, I have to use a little oil to lubricate. You have to put this little ring-like thing. A little pick or a plectrum, a plectrum in a way, yeah. yes. Here on this finger. And uh, what is very interesting on sitar is that you can play on the frets and get the same notes sometimes by not playing on the frets, but pulling them sideways, as they say, bending the string. And that's what gives a very special effect of the bowed instrument or a vocal effect, like this, for instance. the first time. Where do you start first with uh, this? Well, mood? that's the whole thing, you know. Ours is an oral tradition. It's not a written down music as in the West. But uh, the beginning uh, can be compared same as the Western classical because we have to do a lot of scale practices, you know, just the technique of it, like... Uh, <laughs> And these are simple things, you know, a lot of exercises and things like that. Each note is uh, has a name, like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La. We call it Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni, Sa. So, soul phase system, no? Sa, Re, Ga, Re, Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Ga, Re, Sa, Re, Ga, Re, Sa, Re, Sa, Ga, Re, Ga, Sa, Re, Sa, Ma, Ga, Ma, Re, Ga, Re, Pa, Ma, Pa, Ga, Ma, Ga, Tha, Ba, Tha, Ga, Ma, Pa, Ma, Ga, Re, Sa, Ni, Sa, Re, Sa, Ni, Tha, Pa. So, this is how the Guru teaches us. By the voice, by not voice, by written music. Also ever. by, you know, demonstrating. But later on, it's no more, it's just vocalizing. And we have a language also, like the drums have a language, the tabla, you know, the accompanist, uh, they have a language for each sound. Same way we also have for each stroke, like this is da, this is ra. So when we are, you know, we know exactly what the sounds are. The guru teaches us like da 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 da
once once you've got the technique, you then have to learn how many ragas are there. Then comes <laughs> the most difficult part because you really learn fixed composition in, in the Western sense, like guts, what we call for the instrument, and uh, songs. You know, just uh, songs in the language Hindi, and this become your teacher later on because each raga you learn a lot of different songs and guts but then after many years what is ultimate game, uh, aim is to improvise and this becomes just a vehicle for improvising you take up a gut which might be a very short gut of maybe two bars or it could be a little longer gut, gut of 16 bars but that's all but even that gut we don't play exactly the same way. Each time it's different. And what we do complete is anything from 50 to 80, 90 percent improvised. 